All right, this is a little situation in which there is a collision that produces a rotation. Uh, I'd like to show this one to my uh, Physics C mechanics students because it covers, uh, well, a lot of the ideas in mechanics, pulls, pulls a bunch of them together. Um, so what's happening here is we have a ball of mass M that's going to hit and stick to the end of this long stick that happens to have mass 2M and its length is just L. And what we're going to try to find out is we're going to find what fraction of the kinetic energy that this ball brought in um, will remain in the system after the collision. Well, so one thing we can do uh, since we have this collision is we can conserve linear momentum. And that's because we just have kind of a free ball hitting a stick that's sort of freely floating in space and they're just going to collide. And so there's no external force on the system, so we're just going to conserve um, linear momentum. And by no external force, I mean we're doing this, say, in the absence of gravity, say, pulling the whole system down, or some external agent knocking into the, um, the ball and the stick. Now, the ball and the stick hit each other, um, but those are internal forces to the system of the ball and the stick. So we are going to conserve linear momentum. And so by conserving linear momentum, we mean that the momentum before is equal to the momentum after. Well, before the collision, the ball comes in with momentum to the right uh, equal to its mass times its initial velocity, so mv naught. And that's going to be equal to the momentum of the system after. Afterwards, the entire system is going to be stuck together and translating to the right. Um, and so its um, momentum will be its mass, which is 3m, so the grand total mass of the system, um, times its final velocity. Now, somebody might be worried about the rotation that's happening, um, but that we're going to treat separately. So this is just fixating on the linear motion, and what's going to be happening is that um, the center of mass of the system after the collision is going to be translating with some final velocity, and we can find it by conserving linear momentum. So solving this for that final velocity, what we find out is that the final velocity of the system, rather its center of mass drifting to the right, is going to be one-third of the velocity that the ball came in with. Well, so if that's the case, we can find the translational kinetic energy of the system after the crash. And that's just going to be one-half times its mass times its velocity squared. Well, its mass is 3m because it's the grand total thing of the stick and the ball moving to the right. And its final velocity is just V initial of the, of the ball over here divided by 3. Um, and so by the time you work this out, you get sort of an extra factor of 3 over 9 here. Um, and so what you get is one-third of what the ball came in with. So in other words, this ball came in with some joules of kinetic energy, um, hit the stick, and then still expressed in terms of translational kinetic energy is one third or 33.3% of what the ball brought in. Um, so what we have is one third of the original kinetic energy of the ball is expressed as translational kinetic energy of the system after the crash. Uh, but of course, some energy is gonna end up going into rotational motion too. Now, one interesting point is this conservation of linear momentum all, everything I've written here so far would be um, true no matter where the ball hit on the stick. So this conservation of momentum and this translation of the system with one-third V initial would be true no matter where that ball hit on the stick. Um, but what is going to be different depending on where the ball hits on the stick is how much rotation is caused. So we're going to look at that next. Now a little warning before we do the next part. Um, and that is don't try to conserve kinetic energy across the collision. In general, there's going to be noise and, uh, you know, sound, heat, and you're going to lose some uh, joules of kinetic energy that are brought into a collision. So in general, kinetic energy is not going to be conserved across the collision. All right. Well, let's look at the center of mass of the system. And that's important because the system is going to rotate around that once the ball and the stick come together. So let's find that center of mass. Well, we're just going to find the y coordinate of it. So uh, when the if we take the the sort of the well lowest point on my screen here of the where the where the ball and this end of the stick are as y equals zero, what we can do is we can say well the position of y equals zero is worth m because that's where the point mass ball is, 
And then the position L over two, which is the middle of the stick here, uh, that's worth two M. And then you have to divide that by the total mass of the system, which is three M. And what you find out is that the center of mass of the system would be one third of the way up the stick, right? So that's where that, that's where that center of mass would be. So that's what the system is gonna rotate around, right? So one third of the way up. So now before the ball hits the stick, here's the ball, here's the center of the stick. That center of mass would be right here, this magenta dot kind of drifting to the right. Um, after the crash, that center of mass just continues along as though nothing ever happened, going at one third the initial velocity of the ball um, creeping along. And so the system is gonna rotate around this point this center of mass. That's one third of the way up from the end of the stick. All right, uh, another thing to think about is how far away this uh, point is from the end of the stick. Well, it's one third of the way up the stick. And that also happens to be one sixth of the way from the center of the stick. Now, why is that? One third of the way up the stick would be two sixths. And then one more six would be three sixths. And then that would get you to the center of the stick. So this uh, velocity of the center of mass, well, that's gonna be constant throughout a crash with no external forces. Um, so the velocity of the center of mass before and after the crash is just gonna be one third of the initial velocity of the ball. All right, well, so let's actually look at the rotation that's caused. Well, to learn how fast the system is gonna rotate after the crash, um, because that's where some of the energy as after the crash is going to be expressed as, as rotational energy. Figure out how fast this thing is going to rotate. What we're going to do is conserve angular momentum um, across the crash. Um, the reason that we can do that is there's, there's, a, there's no external agent making a torque on the system. Um, the, the only torques on the system would be internal to the system of the ball and the stick. There's nothing external to the system making, making torque. And so conserving angular momentum means that we take the angular momentum before equal to the angular momentum after. Well, what has angular momentum before? On the left-hand side here, that's the ball. It comes in with angular momentum about the center of mass. It's uh, like mv times r perp, or mv times distance from a rotation axis. So you have um, mass times velocity of the ball coming in, and it happens to be L over three um, offset from the center of mass of the system. And so that's the angular momentum the ball brings in. After the collision, um, the best way to express the angular momentum of the system is as uh, I omega. Um, you can make an analogy with angular momentum and linear momentum. Instead of linear momentum being mass times velocity, it's like angular momentum is like angular mass, if you want rotational mass, moment of inertia, um, times angular velocity. And so what we're gonna need to do is figure out the moment of inertia of the stick and the ball, and now here's the key, around the center of mass, or about the center of mass. Well, so let's take a look at this. A lot going on here, but we'll break it down. Um, what I did here was I handled the stick in two terms, okay? In the first term here, this 1 12th times the mass of the stick, which is 2m times its length squared. Well, that is the moment of inertia of a stick about its center. Well, the stick, of course, is not rotating about its center, but if it did, that would be the moment of inertia. 1 12th times the mass of the stick, which is 2m uh, times l squared. But then we have to add to that a term because the uh, axis of rotation has been shifted by L over six from the center of the stick. So there's a shift term. And this shift term um, generally goes like mass times a shift distance squared. Well, the mass is 2M for the stick and the shift distance is L over six. And then we got to square it. So those two terms in white account for the stick. And then finally we have the ball um, in general, we'll treat it as, well, we'll treat it as a point mass. It's just gonna be, in general, for a ball or a point mass is mR squared with the r, the radius that it rotates in or orbits in, um, is gonna be L over three. So this ball, when the system rotates, is just gonna be rotating around that magenta dot around the, the center of mass there. And so it's just m times L over three squared. So that's the ball being treated as a point mass. Um, so now we just have a little bit of algebra to do. 
um, if you if you kind of pull an M, ML squared out of all these terms, you're left with a, well, ML squared and then a bunch of fractions. Um, let's just check some of these. Um, let's see, so 1 12th times 2, why that'd be 1 6th. So that's sort of the fraction for the first term. Next term would be like, uh, what, 2 over 36, so that's 1 over 18. And this last term, you get this 9 in the denominator because a square in the 3. So you have these fractions times ML squared as the moment of inertia of the system times its angular velocity. And then if we simplify those fractions, my guess go into 18ths. So like 3 18ths plus 1 18th plus 2 18ths, um, which I'll end up getting is 6 18ths. So the whole thing becomes one third. So as it turns out for this whole system with the ball attached to the end, its moment of inertia around this um, magenta dot is one third ml squared. Um, and so then what we can do is one third ml squared omega um, is going to be our um, final angular momentum. And we're going to set that to our initial angular momentum of mv naught l over 3. And so that allows us to solve for the, the final angular velocity of the system, um, which is just going to be v naught over L. So that's how fast this thing's going to rotate um, after it hits. And so now we're going to be ready to find how much kinetic energy is in the form of rotational Ke in the system. So let's go for it. Let's look for the rotational kinetic energy. Uh, in general, it's 1 half I omega squared. And so that's going to be 1 half times this moment of inertia of the entire system, which we already figured out was one third ml squared, um, and then times the square of the angular velocity. Simplifying a little bit, moving some fractions around, I guess the l squareds will cancel. And what we find is, and I'm writing it in this funny way of, it's one third times one half mv naught squared. The reason I wrote it like that is it shows that in the form of rotational kinetic energy, it's one third of the original kinetic energy that the ball brought in. So the ball comes in with some energy, one third of those joules go into rotating the stick. And as we saw earlier, one third of it went into translating the stick. So we already did this. Um, that was one half times the entire mass of the system, 3m, times its velocity, v naught over three squared. And by playing around with that, you found that in the form of translational energy, that was another one-third of the energy that was brought in. Um, so what that means is remaining after the crash, two-thirds of the kinetic energy that the ball brought in remains after the crash. The other one-third must have gotten wasted as, say, sound and heat. Um, so interesting little problem. Um, Again, we only we lose um, we lose one third of the energy that the ball brought in um, uh, because one third is expressed as translation, one is expressed as rotation, one third, and another third is wasted. As it turns out, if you were to hit the stick closer and closer to the center, um, less and less of the energy the ball brought in would be able to be dumped into rotation. Um, and so, what you'd find is if you hit the stick dead center. Um, then two thirds of the energy would get wasted and only one third would remain. Um, so it's an interesting little scenario to look at and I hope this helps you in your understanding of collisions that cause rotation.